Hello, I'm MK1 La Rosa. Hi, I'm MK1 Nenny with the Stan Team here in Yorktown, Virginia. Today we're going to be going over the unpacking, operation, and repacking of the portable P6 pump. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the anti-pilferage seal. Once that's removed, we're going to remove the clamp from the lid. And what we're checking for on the clamp is any kind of corrosion. You're making sure all the hinge pins and the welds are tight and it operates as designed. Once that's been inspected, you can set that aside. Next, we're going to remove the lid. On the lid, you're making sure the rubber gasket is in place and not separating anywhere. So on the top of the lid, you want to verify four pieces of retro reflective tape and it's stenciled in one inch block lettering, no smoking, and in half inch, it's gonna say gasoline in can. <clears throat> so next, we're gonna check our instruction card with flashlight. They're attached together with approximately three feet of paracord with two bowlins. For the instruction card, it should be in good condition and laminated. And one of the main things you wanna make sure of is that the instruction card has the gas can lid that matches what's in the can. For the flashlight, you wanna verify operation. This one works. And then you also want to verify the condition of the batteries and the expiration date. Expiration dates printed on the bottom of these. Good till November of 2025 on both. So these are good. So next we're going to be removing the rubber band from the outer bag. Inside the outer bag, you have your suction hose. Set that aside. And then the inner bag, after you remove the rubber band, you're going to let it vent to the atmosphere for two minutes as per the MPC. And that's to allow any kind of gasoline fumes that may be trapped inside the bag to evacuate to the atmosphere. So next we'll be removing the pump assembly from the can. Inspecting the pump, I like to work from the top to the bottom. First thing you'll notice is that the gas can lid does match the instruction card. You want to verify the level in the tank matches what the fuel gauge says, which it does. After checking the fuel level, we'll go ahead and remove the retaining straps and remove the fuel can. On the fuel can, you're checking welds for any obvious leaks. And then on the bottom of the can, you want to make sure that the rubber stoppers aren't wearing away at the metal. This can's in good condition. Set that aside. On the fuel tank bracket, you're making sure the rubber stoppers are good and not worn away. These are all good and tight. The actual bracket is not loose. We'll check the hardware. On the retaining straps, you're checking for cracks and dry rot, making sure there's no cracks on the actual hard plastic pieces. So now we're going to be checking the recoil assembly. For the recoil assembly, you want to make sure the T-handle screws are finger tight in case you need to remove the assembly due to failure and use the spare pull cord. These are good. So for the pull start, you want to make sure the cord is not frayed at all. There's a knot on the inside to stop it from coming out and it recoils. Next, we're going to move on to the fuel hose. There's two band clamps. You're checking for dry rot, any leaks. The O-ring is in place around the nozzle. Fuel filter is in good condition. And then this is a common wear spot right here where it goes inside the pump casing. You're making sure there's no pinhole leaks or any kind of wear or chafing on the hose. Moving around, you have the air cleaner assembly. You're making sure the wing nut is tight. You have the throttle arm here. It's gonna be red for slow, green for fast. That moves freely back and forth. Below that, you have the choke lever. The left is going to be in the choke for cold start position. The right is going to be warm and run. And then on the bottom, you have the fuel valve that sends fuel to the carburetor. 
Moving around to this side, you have the serial number plate on the bottom. You have the valve cover and valve cover gasket. You're checking for any kind of oil leaks, any fuel leaks coming from the carburetor. Spark plug wire has no nicks or cracks. No corrosion on the inside and that it is seated properly. Here you have the exhaust, checking the hardware, making sure the hardware is tight. So now we're going to move on to the discharge side of the pump first. You're going to check the cam lock surface and sealing surface for any nicks or burrs that would stop the gasket from sealing. On the inside, there is a swing type check valve. You want to make sure that swings freely. If that gets stuck open, it's going to be next to impossible to get prime on the pump. Moving over, you have the suction side. You're looking for the same things. You're checking the cam lock surface and the sealing edge for the gasket for any nicks or burrs. And on the inside, you're doing a visual check of the brass impeller and make sure it spins freely. Above that, you have the priming hose assembly. You're checking for dry rot, any holes that would make it hard for the pump to prime. Here you'll see the spare pull cord attached with a Lark's head knot and a figure eight in the end of it. This is in case the factory recoil fails and you need to use this instead. So the priming pump is held to the pump assembly with two hose clamps. You're making sure the hardware is tight. There's any no cracks in the fittings and the T-handle moves in and out freely. So directly below the priming pump assembly, you have the oil dipstick. We're going to remove the dipstick and check the oil condition and level. So we're going to remove the dipstick, wipe the oil off, insert without threading it, and check the oil level. It's about halfway up the dipstick, and it looks clean. So once you remove all the contents from the can, you're going to inspect the pump can itself. At the bottom of the can, you're going to inspect the liquid gasket to make sure it's not peeling up because you do not want water to get inside the can in case this goes overboard. You're checking for any kind of corrosion, dents, cracks in the welds. Around the outside of the can, you have four pieces of the retro reflective tape. And on the bottom of the can, in two inch block letters, property of Coast Guard. You're also checking the welds on the handles for any cracks because they're weak spots. And on the bottom of the can, you have four additional pieces of retro reflective tape. You also want to check around the leading edge because these tend to get chewed up by non skid. This can's in good condition. All right, now we're going to be going over how to inspect the hoses. This one here is the suction hose, it's 15 feet long. We're going to start at the bottom. You have the weighted cap that helps keep the hose submerged and you have the protective cage. This stops debris from getting inside of the pump, which could block it. You're checking the cage for any cracks in the welds, any splits or holes. Then moving up, you have the rubber seal that keeps the cage attached to the hose. And then you just work your way down the hose and you're checking for splits, holes, or any kinks in the hose. So at the other end of the hose, you have the cam lock attachment that connects to the pump. You're checking the rubber seal around the outside to make sure it's not split or cracked. You're checking the dogs and the cams that the rivets ain't loose and they move freely. And on the inside of the connection, you're making sure the rubber gasket is in place and lubricated. Now we're going to go over the discharge hose. It's a 25 foot rubber lay flat where you're just going to work from one end to the other. You're checking for rips, tears or holes. Usually you'll see the wear points right, right where they fold. <clears throat> and when you get down to the cam lock attachment, checking the stainless steel hose clamp, you're making sure that's tight. Checking the dogs and the rivets to make sure they swing freely and nothing's loose. And then on the inside of the coupler, you're making sure the rubber gasket is in place and lubricated. All right, now that all the contents are removed from the can, we're going to go over pump setup prior to operation. Position pump on a level surface. Connect fuel line to the fuel tank. Rotate fuel line up and down slightly. Testing this way could identify a failed O-ring not visible during inspection. Open vent valve on fuel tank cap by turning counterclockwise. 
Connect the discharge hose to the pump. Connect suction hose to the pump. Turn the engine ignition switch to on position. Open the fuel valve on the engine, pushing it to the right and on position. Move choke lever to the closed position. Set throttle to about one third open. So once you verify everything's tight and your suction side is below the water line, you're going to start pumping. If you don't have water pressure, water coming out of the priming assembly, in about one minute after priming, stop and reassess, check for air leaks. So you'll know the hose is primed once you get water coming out of the prime assembly like that. Alright, so some things to go over before we start the pump is you're going to give it a few extra primes to make sure you have water to the impeller. After it starts, you can give it several more primes until you see good pressure and water coming out of the discharge hose. And once the pump warms up, you can shut the choke off. As per the MPC, you have six pulls to get the pump started. If the pump does not start, Refer to the MPC for engine service. All right, so now that the pump is set up for operation, I wanted to go over some of the things you're gonna check for while the pump is running. You're gonna check for fuel leaks around the hose and the quick connect. You're gonna make sure the pump is secure so it doesn't vibrate into the water. Your discharge hose, you're gonna check around the band clamp and the seal to make sure you're not losing water around this side of it. On your suction side, you wanna make sure that the suction side of the hose is not laying on the bottom where you could suck up debris into the pump. After the pump starts, after about a five minute run time and the pump is now warm, you're gonna run the pump through its full operation of throttle for about five minutes of run time before you shut it down. Prior to starting the pump, you wanna make sure you have your hearing protection in. You're gonna give it one or two final primes to make sure you have water up to the pump and you have six poles to get the pump started. Once the pump is started, you want to ensure you have discharge by priming the pump. So now we're going to go over how to use the spare pull cord. First step is to remove it from the pump frame. And then you're going to remove the three T-bolts from the recoil start. Once the recoil start is removed, you're going to look for this little notch on the crankshaft and place the knot on the outside and wrap in a clockwise direction. One thing to be extremely careful of is after the pump is running, you're going to have running machinery with no guard. Properly attach the spare pull cord. We're going to use a locks head knot. You make two coils. Or around the frame, feed it up through the bottom, and pull it tight. So now that we've ran the pump and allowed ample time to dry, we're going to go over pump packing procedures. Place two plastic bags into the pump container, one inside the other.
Stow the discharge hose. Fold the discharge hose into a flat coil approximately 10 inches long with the coupling hanging free from the end of the coil by approximately 8 inches. Place the coil discharge hose into the inner plastic bag pressed flat against the side of the container. Extend the hose coupling pressing the hose flat against the container side. Stow the pump. Ensure pump is stored with the fuel tank in the mounted position. Check the fuel line quick connect fitting is disconnected. Place the pump assembly into the inner plastic bag. Orient the pump so the bulk of the discharge hose is under the fuel tank. Ensure the discharge hose coupling is under the pump suction inlet. Place two new Desi packs into the inner plastic bag. Secure the inner plastic bag using one rubber band. Stow the suction hose. Insert the suction hose strainer into the container between the inner and outer plastic bags. Route the strainer between the pump discharge outlet and the exhaust shield resting the strainer on the bottom of the container. Coil the remaining suction hose clockwise into the outer plastic bag inside the container around the outside of the fuel tank while pressing the hose down into the lifting frame. Stow the coupling into the center of the coil. Check the suction hose coupling gasket is in place. Place two new Desi packs into the outer plastic bag. Secure the outer plastic bag using one rubber band. Place the flashlight with attached laminated instruction tag on top of the outer plastic bag so as not to interfere with the container cover. Place container lid on the container. Ensure all contents of the container do not interfere with the lid closing. Secure the lid in place with the loop clamp. Secure the clamp loop by routing the tamper seal through the clamp ring latch hole.